Hey, welcome back to an episode of Instant Rom Podcast. I'm your host, Juan, and as always, my co-host here with me. Hey, Trip. <laughs> hey, Trip. How you doing, man? I'm so great. I'm always good. Yeah, you chilling? Yeah, whenever you're around, I'm even better. Nice. Yeah, it is nice. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. That's cool. I'm so good. How good? You can say that my uh, score is through the roof. Whoa, why would you say something that way, Juan? I would say that my score is pretty high. Whoa, that's neat. Hey, did you recently get a sex change? Uh, and, you know, because here in the Instagram podcast, we're pretty cool with, you know, fucking labels and shit. Eat my girl. So, you know what that means? Uh, what? This week, we're reviewing High Score Girl. Neat. That's a show that came out on Netflix that actually came out like five months before or something. Mm-hmm. But, of course, you know how... You know how the United States be. They'd be like, Mm-mm, Netflix is getting that. We ain't touching it. So yeah. we couldn't watch it until Netflix uh, fucked on us a little bit. For sure. So we, I watched it when it came out. You watched it more recently. Uh, I would say over the last two days. Yeah. So you were for sure going to be driving this ship a lot right, more cool. than I am. Yeah. So anyways, uh, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But in the meantime, we're going to update you with what's been going on. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. recently, we've been in a giant hate war between ourselves and another podcast. That's right. Yeah, the Joe Rogan Experience. It's not true. That's, oh, a, that's okay. the wrong podcast to start a fight with. <laughs> Are you sure? Because oh, I'm yeah. pretty, okay. That guy fucking, that guy fucks hard. Yeah. But honestly, have you been seeing like all the guests that he's been having? No. I feel like each one just keeps blowing the next out of the water, but he got Alex Jones on his podcast. No shit. The InfoWars guy? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I think you and I talked about this. It's off like the pure air. insanity. They get into like some arguments on air. It was four hours long. I haven't watched all of it, but holy shit. I, I have nothing against Joe Rogan. Like I like his, I mean, I, the first thing I knew about he's not him for me. was Fear Factor. They're you know? good Clips. Yeah, 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 Fear so Factor. He's like always Fear been Factor. my Fear Factor boy. He was a Fear Factor guy, and then like he started doing MMA, which is I thought was pretty cool and like, cool for I him. I thought he did MMA, and then he did Fear Factor. No, no, I think you know what I'm saying. He got into like the MMA like announcing part of it. Oh yeah, he became yeah. like a sports announcer for like the UFC specifically. Yeah, um, and I'm sure he did MMA before that. And he yeah, you don't up. remember Dog Eat Dog? He's done. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh my god, he's done a lot of things, uh, but I never really got into his podcast. There nah. are clips from his podcast that I think super funny, dude. His clips are brilliant they're so fun like i really like the one with him and elon musk yeah and i think the best one i think maybe you showed it to me was an interview of joe rogan talking to joe rogan holy shit it's <laughs> so good that? yes of course this it's so, so funny. funny and there's there's a clip that comes around like every i don't know month or so mm-hmm. where people just take a shitload of little clips of joe rogan and he's talking about a different topic and they're all playing over each other and you can't hear anything that he's saying it's just oh a bunch God. of noise of madness. but then eventually it goes um He says something. It's entirely possible. And then it goes back into like chaos, but they're all lined up to be like entirely possible. You just hear that super clear. It's so funny. Says it the exact same way every single time. And he says it a lot. (laughs) It's like his go to. It's like his catchphrase. Yeah. Yeah. Joe, entirely possible. Rogan is what people call him. pretty funny um that but, one's good but anyways like uh like i was saying uh i know he does a podcast i know people who really like him i've never really been into like listening to his podcast nah. but it sounds interesting to watch him talk with uh was it alex jones, alex jones because holy shit because i <sighs> avid alex jones fan <laughs> alex jones is a huge piece of shit like all the things yeah. he stands for all the things he does are horrible yeah but his clips God, they make me fucking laugh. Oh, yeah, he's man. so dumb. He's been around for a long time, too. And I used to, like, watch these videos that would pop up on, uh, I don't remember if it was, like, pre-Facebook days or when it was, but it was, like, early internet social media boom, okay. right? Uh, and all these videos of Alex Jones started popping up, just him screaming at people in the streets. And I'm like, this guy's insane. I love him. <laughs> and then, like, as my life has gone on, you forget about him. He yeah, gets yeah. brought back up, and you're like, "Oh shit, he's still doing that crazy motherfucker." Fucker, yeah, he's insane. No, he. Uh, so he very recently got like like kicked off of almost all social media platforms because they uh, like labeled his stuff as hate speech. Yeah, <laughs> which I mean, he does speak. He does say a lot of hateful <laughs> things about things. So people were super mad about that. Like, that's that's oh, un-American. That's, so that's you know, ruining his constitutional uh, rights or whatever. Come I was on, like, man. I'm like, go fuck yourself. He's still like avidly like 
spews his bullshit on the mm-hmm. Infowars like website and app or whatever. So yeah. he has a platform and people listen to him, which is fucking nuts. But I was telling you that there's a guy that was on Vice who decided to live like an info warrior for a week. Yeah. So he bought he bought all of the like the Alex Jones like uh fucking supplements, supplements and that, he, that he tries to pawn off people and he got rid of all other forms of media and he only watched got his news from InfoWars for a week and he felt horrible. Like he this is like the oh, worst thing ever. Well I mean because for somebody that's like more lenient if they if they tried to do that, they would be like, I mean, like you know, but for somebody that's completely against it, yeah, that would like fuck with your psyche. Just being like, I want out, I need out. One of my uh, so what I do since I'm an animator or whatever, I like to save videos on like on wherever if like on, it's on like for Facebook like or reference Instagram type for things. reference, but specifically uh, also for like audio references because it's always cool like to have something and be like animating around an audio clip yeah and there's just like this uh i think it's three or four minutes long clip of alex jones and i was like i'm gonna save these because i really want to animate at least one of them and i always try to like decide which clip i wanted yeah and i can't one of my favorites is you know the turning of the frog is gay you know that was <laughs> it's so stupid that's yes. a classic one but i also really like one where he goes turning the freaking frogs where gay. he goes he goes i'll punch you right in the head or whatever or some shit and then he goes mm, mm, i'm sorry i'm sorry you know because he's like apologizes right afterwards <laughs> yeah. um so what i end up doing is like i like I make a mission of like every every month or so like i'll scroll through my backlog of like old facebook stuff like videos mm-hmm. or whatever that i saved and i always see that one and i play it and i go i'm gonna pick this time and i end up not picking every time but i end up watching the whole thing <laughs> Because so good, so fucking dumb. Um, pretty frequently, whenever we're playing games, we always reference that video. That's like a compilation of him saying different, like weird ass shit. <laughs> like, got hot, come, I'm coming. <laughs> What's he? Uh, he goes. He got. Does it something about like Pepsi being flavored like babies or whatever? Or whatever. <laughs> One of my favorite ones. Alex Jones is brilliant. We could go the whole episode just talking about him. Well, he is an anime character, so we might as well talk about him. <laughs> one where he freaks out about the way that Hillary Clinton opens a beer or something, or a, yeah, a, 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 like a like a pickle jar or whatever. It's like fucking great. Anyways, I did not know Joe Rogan was uh, had Alex Jones. I did not know we were beefing with the Joe Rogan experience. Yeah, well, we are because he got Alex Jones before we did. I would, That's what started it all. I would never want to meet that man. <laughs> Like, not, like, even, like, in you, passing. Yeah, you wouldn't want to bump into no, him on the streets. No, I wouldn't. There's some, no, there are definitely some people, and it's like, they say, don't meet your idols. So. <laughs> I want to make it very no, clear I, that we... I totally agree. I want to make it very clear that we do not idolize Alex Jones. <laughs> He's a piece of shit. Could you imagine? Somebody's like, I can't meet him, dude. Ooh, no, I'm freaking out. <laughs> It reminds me of uh, Donald Glover meeting the guy from Reading Rainbow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He just shuts down on a community. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's LeVar Burton, my man. Yeah. Like, come on. I don't know his fucking name. Anyways, um, that's a great way to start the episode. Uh, yeah, so. <laughs> what have you been up to? <laughs> I don't know, man. Honestly, this past week has just been a blur of me playing video games. Uh, I went hard on a little bit of Monster Rancher. I don't remember if we talked about this a little bit last episode. I don't remember either. Yeah, whatever. So I went a little bit hard on some Monster Rancher. I put it in a shitload of DVDs. I started a little list of like, hey, this uh, this DVD is going to get you a good monster in the future. I started looking up a bunch of them. There's some good ones. There's a rabbit named, I think it's named Mama. Mm-hmm. And it's just like wearing an apron with some like oven mitts on. And it has a spatula and spoon as ears mm-hmm. <laughs> and it just looks so dumb but then i found out that uh the original monster Ran- not the original monster rancher 2 uh if you put that in to like be read as like what kind of a monster for is monster this? Rancher 3 yeah. Yeah. just for any context for people that don't have any fucking clue what i'm talking about right Which now was because me. i'm pretty sure most people yeah have no idea what the fuck i'm talking about so anyways you put in a disc it reads it gives you a monster monster rancher 2 gives you a pterodactyl fighting bird man and I'm, like, way fucking into that. Mm-hmm. So I went on the internet, and I was like, hey, how much is the Monster Rancher 2 nowadays, you guys? A new one costs 250 bucks. Cool. Like, unopened? Yeah. A new copy of Mario Kart Double Dash costs $400. Oh, yeah. No, I have, like, the Mario titles and mm-hmm. stuff, those make more sense to me. But whenever it's, like, a niche thing where it's like, who the fuck has played Monster Rancher? I know one other person that got hard into Monster Rancher, and it's Tom. And... That's honestly the only reason I wanted to be friends with him. I mean, you could probably get a cheaper used version. So anyways, I got one for like 18 bucks right. off of eBay. And, 
you know, it's a used one. So I was like, I don't know what it's going to be. Came in like one of those little tiny shitty uh, paper, CD cases. Yeah. Not, oh. not paper, but no, it was like a the really jewel. flimsy ones. Okay. Yeah. Like not flimsy, but I know we talk about the, the really yeah, thin ones, just the, the super small yeah. CD cases. So it came in one of those and I'm like, all right, well, let's look at the backside. It looks like it's never been played in oh, its wow. entire. Yeah. It's crazy. Cause there were other ones that I was looking at that cost the same price. And it's like, Corey written on the top of it just to show like it's Corey's game, not Zach's mm-hmm. or whatever the fuck brother Corey had. And then there's other ones that say like all oh, the best video, like Hollywood blockbuster, all that shit. Like the rented ones, yeah, yeah. And uh, I found same same price. It's almost pristine. It just doesn't have a case. It's fucking incredible. And you only need it to scan, right? Oh, yeah. Well, I also played a lot more Monster Rancher 2 than Monster Rancher 3. So I'll also use that for Monster Ranchering in the future <laughs> when I want to. Yeah. Um, because I'm glad, you, I'm glad you're making good choices right now. Big difference between 2 and 3. Yeah. 2. A number. Uh, yeah, that's mostly it. Just like one, one, one is the difference. Uh, big difference, okay? Because it could have been 0. 0.5, which it's like, eh, yeah. it's not, you know. Um, anyways... You, in the third one, you collect these like discs, these are pieces of discs as you're exploring areas and whatnot, and then you can make monsters and that's all good, whatever. But then they allow you in Monster Ranger 2 to take two kinds of monsters and smash them together Mm -hmm. to make different types. So you could take a lobster and you could take a, a bunny. Yeah, you can take a bunny and make a bunny lobster. You're all good to go. And the t- they take that away in Monster Rancher 3? Yeah, Monster Rancher 3 just has that weird, like, go find some discs, pieces of discs, and then you can make a good monster. That's strange. Not really into it. So, uh, huge downs on that. Hmm. But yeah, with Monster Rancher 2, there was that. And you could also just say, hey, monster, go and do, like, a special thing. event thing. And then it runs off into the fucking beach fights a giant crab jumps up like this insane looking scary like you're gonna die if you jump up here kind of chasm and he goes up to the top of the chasm and starts fighting some more shit and dodging giant coconuts and whatnot you know how it does but meanwhile you're just watching it and you're like go i trained you hard for this i put all my work in so you could kick ass Mm -hmm. and then it just like gets crushed by the crab before it even has to jump up anything and you're like well we need to train more get back in there you little fucko run around this racetrack it's great it's like best game ever i'm glad that you uh you enjoying your time oh man you would too if you enjoyed video games yeah. yeah Well, it's great. You pop up your Pokemon, and then, oh, fuck. Wait, Pokemon happened this week. Guys, guys, everybody, Pokemon happened this past week. I'm really excited about it. I don't know about you guys, but I'm fucking stoked. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, Pokemon announcements happened, and it was my day off of work. I think it was Thursday or maybe it was Wednesday last week. I don't remember. Fuck it. And uh, I... I had the day off. There was going to be an announcement at 6 a.m. And I'm like, should I wake up for that? Nah, I shouldn't set an alarm. Fuck it. And then I woke up at 6.07 and was like, whoa, okay, thanks, natural alarm clock. Mm-hmm. Just waking up naturally. And I just pop it up, pop up my phone, look it up. I'm like, okay, what did they talk about? Oh, shit. We got Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. We got three starters. You have a bunny that looks like it's going to play some soccer. It also looks like a shonen protagonist in a way. Mm-hmm. And then you got Super Anxiety Lizard that sports out a little bit of water. People say it might turn into like the Loch Ness Monster because this is all taking place in like Britain, essentially. Um, and the last one, the little monkey boy who's banging a stick on a rock. And mm-hmm. people are like, I don't know what this guy's going to be. Who fucking knows what he's going to be? A big theory that I am supporting very hard right now is that he will be uh, like music Pokemon. Because the whole like early rock music was pretty heavily influenced from uh, the uk Mm -hmm. so you could look at bands like the clash and whatnot um and (laughs) i say and whatnot there's like a whole bunch but anyways uh there's a lot of influence and people are kind of saying that since there's a little monkey boy looks like it might be a little bit bigger like a little bit more Mm gorilla-y so people are thinking the last evolution might turn into a gorilla Mm -hmm. and if it's like playing music could be a reference to the gorillas which i'm a huge fan of and like oh That'd be rad. When I say huge fan, I mean I've listened to all of their songs at least once. I haven't enjoyed as many as I've listened to. 
But I like Huge the Gorillas fan. a lot. Yeah, Huge yeah. fan. Anytime they put out a new video, I'm there. Probably the biggest fan of the Gorillas ever. Honestly, maybe. Probably. <laughs> But I'm really fucking into that. If it turns into like a heavy metal kind of like Gorilla Boy, that would be nuts. So because people are thinking it's going to be steel grass, which would be tight, mm-hmm. and like steel is like metal. So I'm I'm backing that up. Fuck it, let's go. Yeah, good. Um, I'm, I'm not as hyped for Pokemon because I don't have a Switch. No, it's going to be great. Yeah, and then you asked me if I was going to get it. It's like probably not. So yeah, I'm like, well, uh, your choice, bitch. Yeah, well, I'll probably watch you play a lot of it for however long it takes you to play it. Like a month. Yeah, probably. Well, probably. I'm glad that that was exciting for you. Oh, big days, big days. Yeah. Well, and like some other stuff happened, but like none of it's that great. Yeah. Until like you and I hung out. <laughs> well, I've been just doing the school stuff, you know. Uh, I can't really, like, I'm trying to think of like exciting things that have happened recently. Okay. I could let you think about no, it a little I'm more. Really think about it I mean, more. I haven't gotten into my whole thing about the game that I've been playing lately, which is a, oh, yeah, you a pretty about, big thing. You want to talk about uh, Anthem? So I've been playing Anthem lately. Uh, it's, it's the most broken game I think I've ever had fun with. And it is so much goddamn fun. I talked about it a tiny bit last week and was like, yeah, it's good. I really like it, but it's, you know, it's buggy as fuck. It's gotten to the point now where we are too afraid to play it. This morning, my buddy Sam booted his game up. He was just going to, like, dick around for a minute. I don't know what he was going to do. And then uh, it crashed on him, and it restarted his PS4. And whenever it restarts your PS4 from a crash like that, it says, Hey, man, this machine was turned off improperly. We've got to make sure that shit's not all fucked. And it checked. And it was like, Okay, boy, shit's fucked. You don't have your Spider-Man file anymore. That's just gone. And uh, let's check on your Monster Hunter file, which Sam put like 600-some hours into, probably. Yeah. I've definitely put over 300. I can't remember how many I've put in there for sure, but I've put in a lot. Sam plays like way more than I do. So anyways, it corrupted his file, but it was able to back it up. And we then found out that this crashing thing has been completely bricking PlayStation 4s. So it just... The whole machine doesn't work, and there's nothing that could be done. Um, there are some things where you could boot it up into a safety mode and then possibly restore your files, but it didn't work for Sam. It doesn't work for that many people, but there's still a possibility that it works. I'm just not willing to take that risk. They're completely fucked on PS4. But man, I've been having so much fun. It's been such a fun game. The story's kind of dumb, and I don't really give a shit about it. But God, it feels good to fly around and jump and shoot and... Zip zap zoop. So you're taking a break from Anthem. Yeah, unfortunately, until they decide that they're gonna fix the like game breaking machine breaking bug. Yeah, that's a that's a big issue. <laughs> a huge. One. How did it even get to this point? What the fuck is EA doing? Hmm. I mean, like clearly they didn't care too much about either this or Apex. Hard to tell since they came out so close together that a lot of the fans from Apex went over to Anthem because they've been waiting for that. Mm-hmm. And now I feel like fans are gonna go back to Apex because they don't want to fucking worry about their shit getting all rocked. Yeah, that makes sense. Ugh, scary stuff. Sorry, dog. And uh, R.I.P. to fucking Sam's Spider-Man game. R.I.P. Spider. R.I.P. Hmm. What have I been up to? Dude, I mean, you, you've had so much time to think about it. No, legitimately. Like, I, I feel like I've just been just doing work for school and stuff and whatnot. So, yeah. Um, which is fine. That's just kind of what life is right now. True. Uh, I've been doing a lot of mocap stuff, a lot of coding things. I've been mm-hmm. learning about arrays. I don't know anything about arrays, <sighs> um, but I had to learn about arrays. And uh, they're kind of bullshit. Yeah. I, I found out that one of my favorite, uh, like, graphic novels is called invincible uh uh-huh. it it finished sometime last year oh but the compendium like the, the third compendium is out and i was like oh dope i really want to like finish it because i've only read the first two compendiums. i remember you told me about this before somebody yeah. has yeah so um i was gonna buy it but i was like oh man i don't really have anybody to talk to about the book and i was like so i hit up one of my friends i hit up uh, other kyle I was like hey mm-hmm. would you mind reading this so we could talk about it he goes, yeah, sh-. and he's like yeah sure and he like demolish both compendiums in like a week or whatever it's disgusting um but it was super cool because he like he was super hyped about it i was like nice and like and then i started rereading like i quickly flipped the second one and chunks of the story that i knew already that like are good i'm like oh i'll read this part but stuff like oh i remember this just a kind of refresher but Mm -hmm. i got the last like i would say like 60 pages yeah and i was like oh shit this is like this little like side arc for these two characters that aren't really important but it's really fucking good so Mm -hmm. i was like I'm going to read every page of these. So I've been doing that recently and um, it's really good to get kind of like back in the swings of like, nice, man. of something like you used to read or like or whatever. Yeah. 
And then when I'm done with that, I'm going to get the next companion for and then the third companion and read that, give it to Kyle. Yeah. Yeah. Or I was thinking about giving it to him first and then me reading it. Cause he'd probably destroy it before I did. Um, probably, but that being said, he would still be able to talk about it. Like, and eh, well, I, I don't really have a good suggestion for this because exactly. either way it's, yeah. I mean, either way, like, yeah, I get it. Like if I read it first, it'll take a few weeks because i'm a normal person yeah well because it's a matter of like how much you want to look at the art and appreciate mm-hmm. each thing like each time that i get a new manga i'm never certain is this going to be an hour is this going to be two hours yeah. how long am i going to take to look at everything for sure yeah i know i totally understand that um but yeah i've been doing that that's that's not considered like anime or fucking other just like forms of media like it's like a book or whatever yeah. or a comic book so that's pretty fun um we played Pathfinder uh, recently. Mm-hmm. We we finally finished this like uh, this arc or this like this side quest. This stupid bullshit, this stupid side, bullshit quest. side quest. That we've uh, <laughs> that's been around for a while. Yeah, uh, since like the beginning of the game, pretty much. Yeah, we uh, we there was like an evil like uh, undead king who's yeah. coming back to you know destroy the world or cover it with sand. And so like, this we, was essentially like a desert version of Warcraft. Yeah. Um, with the whole frozen throne so we had to, expansion yeah we had to stop that and we did um i just really liked the last bit of it because like um i've acquired like my super weapon and yeah and then uh, uh eliza. eliza has also see so yeah, <laughs> yeah. i haven't gotten hers yet but uh like we're all super low on health mm-hmm. and super low on spells and like you pump me up super strong like okay you gotta you gotta fucking kill the same okay, <laughs> yeah, like, like, do, you have to do it i was so. like do my fucking best because i you know, my weapon does do a lot of damage I'm like mm-hmm. cool so i engage myself because i would just been doing ride buys to try to not engage myself so because could, you didn't have any health exactly um so i engage myself and then like so we're fighting and I, the first round I, I do okay and then he comes at me he rolls a one he breaks his weapon i was like fuck that's awesome yeah and so then i go well it also it gets melted by your lava sword yeah, which that's is, an important well, thing well he rolled a one it was like a really bad yeah. yeah so then i was like cool okay so i i get three attacks first attack i roll does okay second attack i roll a one and then kyle's like cool roll your damages so i do and he goes great you fucking hit trip <laughs> and he's like trip's dead or like you're unconscious yep i was like <laughs> got fuck. knocked out and i was like well i still got my shitty boy it's what we call like our last attack because we use a different like a uh, modifier for yeah it. well and, essentially there's because of something that i do i make it so everyone could do two good attacks mm-hmm. if you just stand in there and then for the last one you do like one final like <laughs> yeah it you still get attack but it's just not as good um but kyle's like well you did roll a one on your second attack you're done i was like well that's fair mm, yeah and so i was like well shit let's see what happens and then kyle comes to attack me with this fucking skelly dude and he doesn't have a weapon anymore so he tries to punch me kyle rolls the thing and he goes oh okay this is what happens and uh he starts explaining what happens and i was like cool fucking kyle rolled a one so what happened was like he was gonna reel back to hit me and i guess i just his fist my, stopped yeah. right in your face yeah and like my character instinctually just kind of like squit like just like puts the sword up at him you know and like hits him in the face or whatever and i was like that's great because my character at first used to be a huge bitch and could do no damage now my character can do a lot of damage but it's still a massive bitch <laughs> yeah so you, but you flinched <laughs> so you didn't the, like cool boy yeah, yeah. No, it wasn't yeah, cool no. Boy. yeah no, it wasn't like i haven't i haven't become more heroic or more like brave or anything it's just like out of instinct, you're such a pussy that you put the sword up in the right position that happened to kill him. Mm-hmm. I was like, I was like, nice. We fucking won, boys. <laughs> yeah. We brought you back to life. We got given like a bunch of cool loots here. I acquired her super, super new weapon. Mm-hmm. And then like we were, you know, told about the crown and that was left behind. And it's like, hey, essentially it kind of reminds me of like, um, fucking the Ice King from Adventure Time. Like, yeah. Yo, this sure. crown, it's, you know, whoever wears it, it's going to go fucking crazy. We have to give it to somebody who mm-hmm. is super good and can fight off like the, it's like you know fucking abilities to make him go mad or the urges to go evil and mm-hmm. i like i like instantly when he said that i was like oh, fuck the only good character we've met in this entire game who, is, who isn't you know who isn't <laughs> dead is yeah. like is uh is kelly you yeah because you know this, this the fucking night nice skeleton that we met in the fucking forest because the other guy would have been brawn uh-huh. you know? but he's, but he's fucking dead. gone yeah so i was like great we got to get rid of kelly which is super sad because he's like one of my favorite characters Kelly's a skelly man yeah. every time that we're getting chased by the windigo he scares it off and he's like hey guys what's up i'm just think, petting animals i think uh, i think sierra suggested like well we'll just put him on dj's dead body i was like, I was like, like no I was like first of all if we could find dj's dead body like that's one thing but second if we put that thing on he would universe fight universe of ter- terror it'd just, be over oh man no way <laughs> 
DJ's character was the most chaotic evil character like, I've ever met. Hey man, should I blind this guy? Stand next to him. Who knows who's gonna get blinded? <laughs> DJ, no. Just minding his own business. Like, I don't know, it'd be fun. Let's steal this from the guard. Like, dude, this is the guard. We're new to town and we suck. How about no? We're like a level we're like level two, dude. Calm down. Let's beat the shit out of a bunch of No, DJ. Come <laughs> on, this is the town. We could do that outside of town. It's like remember when we tried to fight those bandits a bit ago and it was tough? These are guards, like trained guards. <laughs> We're so fucked. We're just terrified. Oh, imagining, yeah. imagining everything like Sly Cooper. Like there are just a bunch of lights going around, and we're hanging out, sleuthing a little bit, trying to be sneaky. And DJ's just like, or we could just run up there and fight them, and, and they get killed in one hit. Just like, whoa, whoa, no thanks. Yeah, yeah, that so. was whack, but super fun. I'm thinking about for the next uh, bit here because we also got teleported to some beautiful land with cascading waterfalls and just everything's green. We climbed up a volcano, offered up some of our favorite shit to uh, the goddess that, or the God, I don't remember if it's, I think it's goddess. Goddess, um, that Sierra's character follows, which essentially the religion is like the circle of life. It's just everything kind of feeds into each other. And that's just n- nature, baby, you mm-hmm. know, um, and I'm like, oh, my character could get behind that. And especially after dying during this fight oh, you know, and then being brought back and like having like everything. I feel like it would be a good character arc to be like, yo, man, let's feel it out. I'm down to vibe with some religion. See what goes on. Oh, you're going to convert? Because I jokingly said my character would convert. Oh, um, no, absolutely. Yeah. I was already thinking that like the second that we got teleported there. I'm like, whoa, this is like a supernatural experience that like has I changed now. You, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. It's, it's dope. So I'm my, thinking about that. I haven't decided if I'm. I don't to. think my character would ever find religion. Oh no, definitely no. not yours. <laughs> What's super funny is we had to sacrifice stuff in this volcano to you know essentially get like a, a full set of heals, yeah. a full set of spells um, that Seer's goddess would like bestow upon us. We mm-hmm. had to get something really precious, and so we're all looking at our inventory and like you give away your bell that makes weed brownies right yeah. once a day whenever you want. Which um, I was surprised because like that's like the most precious to you. And my other choice was a melody bow, which yeah. I use for like fighting and playing music and whatnot. And I'm like, I think I'm gonna go with that one since it's like a little bit more versatile. It's like, like it's like something that other people enjoy a lot too. And I would still be able to play music. Yeah. I would just lose one of my instruments. Plus, you don't like, you don't like have all that much. You're very like your, your character is very minimalist. So oh like, yeah, yeah. He's got I, two absolutely. things. I, you, I, I was like, I Kyle, what the fuck? I suggested to give you like your tattoo. Like you just rip off your skin. <laughs> you know, whatever. Um, I think Eliza gave away her family ring, uh-huh. like, uh, which she came to the fucking island to retrieve. And she's like, well, <clears throat> fuck it. Time you're, to go. She's like, you're my family now. Cider Boy's like, ah, oh, that's sweet. I'm like, damn. Uh, Sierra gave away her kit that makes, to make like, uh, jewelry. Yeah. Which is like her favorite thing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I gave away a jar of pickles. Cause, uh. Cause you're a piece of shit. <laughs> No, uh, it's something that we've had for a long time. It's been like two years. Yeah, like uh, like we acquired it in a maze, and like uh, Kyle rolled to see what the loot was, and it was like it was like a twenty, so something really important. But it was like he also rolled something else to see, like, but it was something really personal. It wasn't like a here's this kick ass sword. It was like mm-hmm. something really important to you. He's like, you got a jar of pickles. I was like, fuck yeah! And I only had two pickles left in the jar, so I had planned to. Uh, when we beat everything in the big bad to crack those bad boys, like, you know, one for me and one for Cuss and be like, good, good job, well done or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then if I would have died, that would have been my last thing. Like, fucking feed me these pickles or whatever, you know? <laughs> yeah. But then I gave him up and I was like, and then I thought about it like, wow, my character is a piece of shit. Like, everybody else gave away like all these other things. But my character's like, you know what's precious to me? This jar of fucking pickles <laughs> that you could get from anywhere. <laughs> and then, I, <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a good time. <laughs> Anyways, it was. It was a was, lot of fun. I had yeah. a blast with that. And Kyle did a really good job at making this big encounter uh, feel like we really had to use everything at oh, yeah. our disposal. It was super fair, too. At no point I was like, fuck, Kyle. He's not making this Oh, yeah. Fun. No, absolutely. Like, it was hard. Yeah. Um, and I was for sure scared several times somebody was going to die. Dude, I took so many goddamn hits. Yeah. It was insane. Well, and, you know, as a note for that, Kyle rolled almost only crits on you. It was like, yeah, no, it, it was fucked up. I'm yeah. like, all right, well, you know, it's not too bad. And then crit and then crit and then crit. I'm like, dude, calm, calm, calm the fuck, fuck down. down. Yeah. But it's fine. Whatever. Like it, it, felt, it all worked but out. It felt it really felt fair. fair yeah. yeah. I'm like, then's the dice. Yeah. That's for sure how it was. Um, so I, we like that. Also really like the music he played for like the, the final encounter. Like, yeah, it was music made by the doom guy. Yeah. It was, it was like really fucking good. Like it, it really felt like, just like 
a part of uh, yeah everything that was going on so it was mm-hmm. good yeah fucking killer super stuff. badass really fun uh definitely like i think it's probably the most fun that i've had with it overall probably yeah in Just a long because, time probably yeah exactly like it, it doesn't have that feeling of oh it's new and fresh and oh man it's scary because i still remember like the scarecrow fight mm-hmm. because it was the first time somebody got downed and mm-hmm. we were like oh kyle's gonna kill fuck. somebody yeah <laughs> yeah um, but yeah, for this one, it, it just felt like, Ooh, it's really anybody's game. Who knows what could happen? I would be fine with my character dying at this point because I feel like it's been through so much and this is a huge bad dude. Mm-hmm. So sure. I could die during this fight if I have to. And it would have felt really bad, but like it would have felt bad, but I'm like, I understand. And I would just write a new character and have a new fun character, whatever. You know, I totally get it. <sighs> but man, it all worked out. We still get all of our characters. It was fun. It was, yeah, it was good. A good time. Oh, it was good. Kyle said he didn't know exactly what was going to happen next, but he's going to work on it. So mm-hmm. super stoked for that. Um, besides that, man, yeah, just chilling, you know, just living, living life, living the dream. What about you, man, for anime wise, what you've been watching? Yo, man, I haven't been watching too much. Uh, watched a few flip flappers here and there. Okay. Oh. You just rewatching it yourself? Love flip flappers, yeah. Yeah. Sam's also kind of going to watch through it too. He's watched the first two episodes, I think. And I just, I love it, man. It's so good. It's got everything that I look for in an anime with like really interesting characters to me because the representations of like id and ego, but they also have their own personal attachments to them. Really like the character design, really like the the voice actors, really like the small contained stories that are all part of an overarching whole. Uh, the, the mystery behind everything, like the fuck is actually going on. Just, I feel like there's so much passion and care put into everything with uh, different kind of visual illusion kind of things. Uh, and then along with just homages to things that people love, like mm-hmm. the Mad Max episode just really really cool and i'm excited to dive more into it and see more stuff and oh man it's such a good show i just forgot about how much i liked it and why i liked it so much it's really weird watching these simplistic characters that don't have too much going on represent something so so much more is going on even Mm -hmm. though nothing's happening it's good it's cool it's weird um and then just been keeping up with the anime so the new episode of mob psycho 100 dropped today and i haven't seen that yet um but episode eight, I think it was, just absolutely blew me away. Did mm-hmm. not expect it to go the way that it went. Did you see it yet? No. You can talk about it. It's no, fine. I'm not going to. <laughs> this, is, this is the biggest. Oh, it's a good like, episode? No, no. It's the biggest thing that's happened in the entire show. Really? It's huge. I think I'm on episode six. Yeah, no. This, this next episode, it just took the biggest. Like, I will tell you this already telling you it's a big episode it's kind of a spoiler um but it starts out and mom's like well i gotta train for the race gotta do good in the race really? so that i could impress subomi and uh he trains his ass off and he works really hard at it right and the whole episode is just kind of like it feels like a throwaway just like oh it's man a- we're getting a little bit of character development we're seeing like oh man his real determination and P- Bregan is just like, oh, fuck, dude. Mob is, like, realizing a lot of shit about himself. I had no idea. He has this drive to him. And then, you know, it's mostly just that going on. In the last, like, two or three minutes, it turns into, oh, my fuck. <laughs> like, yeah, shit oh. just pops off. I would not say that. I, I think... When you see it, you'll know. I think um, fucking another friend of ours, uh, I mean, friend of mine, he's your friend too, Brian, was telling me about I've it. I've heard Brian. He goes... Uh, <laughs> yeah, hey, like dude. Brian. He, he's like, hey, have you watched the most recent episode of Mob or whatever? And I think this was because it wasn't today's episode or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I go, no, I haven't. And he, and he said something like, oh, fucking bro. The, and I was like, okay, well, don't say anything. He's like, no, I wouldn't. But dude, I was like, okay, you've said too <laughs> dude, much. Trust me. Like, I got a text. I think it was from Kate or something, or maybe it was from Abe. I don't know. And they were just like yo you seen the new mob and immediately i just like send back emojis that are like very appropriate for the episode yeah. like oh that's fucking dark man people have been really <laughs> it's so good people have really been liking that show i mean like i'll wear my i used i have, I have two mob shirts and uh, i wear them all the time right but uh recently uh, like people at school will be like oh fucking dude fucking nice shirt yeah, yeah, i don't fucking. know what's going on like, people huh. feel like they're more into mob yeah and no, i feel like this season has really i think people have I've gotten into it more and they'll go back and watch the first season and go to the second season. Cause I don't know if it's because clips are playing and people are like, Oh fuck that looks it's cool. It's really or what. good. It just, it feels 
it feels good to know that we watched something that was like great before everybody else knew it was great, you know. But it's well, also I mean, really good to know people are, f- are discovering. They're this coming thing. around to it. Yeah. Well, it was also weird because going into Mob Psycho 100 for the first time was like, well, everyone and their cat knows what One Punch Man is. Yeah. This is made by the same guy. Let's check it out. Yeah. And it just had such different vibes that it was hard to kind of get into when you for have sure. that mentality behind it. But then knowing like. Oh, this is a really solid show. Yeah. And Bones has shown us, at least through My Hero Academia, for people that are more casual with anime, yeah. that Bones has a lot behind it. Yeah, they got the Bones. They got extra Bones. So Mob Psycho 100 is just, uh, it's a new it's pressure a treat, show. Sure. Yeah. Oh, I guess I have, to catch, oh. I have to catch up with that because, I mean, we are planning on talking about that more extensively yeah, next week. Yeah, so fucking catch up so we'll, by next we'll, week. We'll... we'll, we'll for now, put a pause on Mob Talk, and we'll get back to it later. Yeah. So next week, we are doing a Mob Psycho 100 episode, and we are doing it with a special guest, yeah. Duncan, uh, who is an old coworker friend of mine. And uh, yeah, he's worked for Funimation, and it, it should be a good episode. Yeah, for sure. Okay. And so I say that before I have any idea what we're going to talk, talk about, about or what yeah. next week's going to be. <laughs> so uh, what else you got? Uh, so then also Rising of the Shield Hero, it's been dope. Just mm-hmm. a good show, having a good time with it. It was the Hot Springs episode that I just got caught up on, so I haven't seen like a newer episode than that. Okay. So that was sexy, that was fun. Uh, and when I say sexy, I mean it wasn't, that's just what I'm saying. It was a fun time, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, was it was super it was sexy. Fine. It was like the worst episode so far, but it was fine. Yeah, it was a throwaway episode. Exactly, yeah. Um, and. <sighs> Fucking what else is there? Andrew's fine. I don't know. This latest episode didn't really get me. They, uh, the princess and their teacher, who's also the demon lord, set up like a dungeon for them to go and rescue the princess in, and it was all you know, yeah, I don't know. It was fine. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Who cares? Uh, Promise Neverland. I did not see the newest episode, but oh man, what a good episode! Such good shit happened in it. I'll talk for, about like, it for sure. As like a manga reader. I I loved seeing people's reactions to it. Yeah. Oh, man. And I, I am so excited to hear the snap. Yeah. And the scream. For sure. And the more things that... Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, anyways, uh, Dororo, also still a fantastic show. I'm still super excited that it has 24 episodes uh, for this season. Honestly, it it's probably the best show of the season, until like Mob Psycho 100 does something in this next episode that I haven't seen that just aired today. <laughs> yeah. In which case everything might flip flop because it's been kind of slow. They had a really tender moment in Mob, which you're about to get to because episode six, I think was just like, ugh. and then episode, episode seven six was, uh, the r- r- it's Reagan, right? R- yeah. Reagan get an yeah, all. Like, I saw that one. Yeah. It yeah. Was, I get what you're saying. It's kind of, ugh. yeah. And then the next episode, it comes around, it, it picks elaborates up. more on that. And then the end of it's like, Oh, just huh. like, you know, you, you remember uh, when you first learn about, like, how Mob first became, like, his pupil or mm-hmm. whatever? It has that same feeling of, like, endearment and just like, oh, he, he is a good guy underneath all that, like, gross shittiness that he is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, it definitely has that feeling, which is cool. Um, and it does a lot of flashback to that time. Anyways, uh, what other Dororo, shows there? You were talking about Dororo. Yeah, well, Dororo, it's just, it's just good. good. Okay, cool. yeah, nothing that's, really special to say about, about it, that. Man. Each episode keeps changing. Um, they are one thing about Dororo is they have all these uh, mythological, like Japanese myth type creatures in it. So there's a, a big monster that's like a giant flying centipede that has a cloud of uh, just dark energy around it, and it goes and it eats people. And then it gets bigger and it sheds its skin. So then it, it, all of its skin goes down in the sky and it's like freaky. Ew. Yeah. It's kind of like a uh, ash, I think is what it's supposed to be like. Like in the, in the myth, it's supposed to be similar to ash. Mm-hmm. And anyways. Yeah. Um, that's pretty cool. And Kyle brought up, there's a game coming out at the end of the month called Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. And it's made by the Dark Souls dude. Is that the Japanese one? Yeah, so it's super Japanese, and this is probably going to be a boss in that. Yeah. Just considering that it's all a bunch of Japanese, Japanese folklore. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I think I remember seeing, you showed me that trailer when uh, whenever they announced it. Yeah, there's like a giant ass snake and a super big fat boy. He's got like fucking mechanical stuff or whatever. Yeah, yeah. it seems intense. But that's cool. Yeah. I'm excited about that one. And there's another show that's out that I've been watching, but I can't remember what the name of it is. The fuck is it? There's one more. I, I, that's one like, that's on, are you watching Slime? Yeah, that's what it is. Slime. I just don't care. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's what it comes down to now. It, every episode is just like, oh, neat. Cool. Uh, all right. Yeah. I feel it. I honestly don't remember what the last episode was. Some lolly chick. Oh, no. He went and the uh, he was teaching the kids and then there was a big old dragon and he ate all the dragon's bad energy. And then he was like, all right. So you see kids like I'm really badass. I just ate a dragon. And they're like, yeah, you're pretty cool. 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 In my book. Uh, let's see. What am I up to? Okay. So. I watched uh, Shield Warrior. I watched the episode after the Hot Springs. Yeah, how um, was it? Is it picking up? Um, if I felt like the episode was going to be another, just kind of like a not throwaway, but more like side quest kind of thing. Sure, yeah. And it turns into like there's some development, and we um, we see we get like remember like during the fight with the the sh- the the spear guy. Okay, like we saw him have that breakdown moment, and like mm-hmm. the shit went all fucky wucky or whatever. Yeah. So we see more of that, and he like he activates, I think, his curse thing or whatever, and like he uh, he goes like super op for a bit. Oh, um, that's cool. Yeah. Um, my only issue with I feel like that episode was, um, what did I want to say? I mean, I liked it. I still like the show or whatever. I just feel like um, I don't know something about the show has has changed a little bit, you know? Well, yeah, definitely. I mean, after his breakdown, yeah. it's gotten more positive. Yeah. And, and it used to be just like, oh, we got to do this. I think I might have like... There's not yeah. a set goal. Because his goal was just to be the best person now, and change everyone's minds. Yeah, now he's just kind of going around and like he's just a merchant and he does good things. And he's, <laughs> Which I think is fucking great yeah, that still, he is picking up these trade skills. He still kind of pretends to be a dick, but he's obviously a good guy. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, which is fine. Uh, what's gonna say? I, I mean, I'm gonna continue to watch the show. I'm not gonna stop mm-hmm. it for no reason. I do. I they did show this thing where like, um, they have like a a callback to for his new side quest. Um, I think the sword hero killed a dragon near this city. Okay, and like he offhandedly was talking about what people are doing. You know, and I, I like I like the fact that all these other heroes, you know, the like the spear, the fucking sword, and the the bow and arrow one, yeah. right? Um, they're out there in quotations doing good, but uh-huh. they're also doing a lot of harm, you know? Like, yeah. Just because like in the episode where like there's a, they're trying to fix the famine or whatever. So yeah. they bring this plant to. Mm-hmm. That and, was the hot yeah, episode. Yeah. 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 So like it, we're seeing like that these other heroes aren't actually helping. Yeah. And um, I think I like that a lot. I'm, yeah. I think that it's a they're nice touch. just doing shit that they think is good, they're, but they're, it's, it feels very like, um, like video gamey where it's mm-hmm. just like, here's the quest, do the quest, kill the dragon. But there's no real like. You know, it's like, well, then what's what the repercussions? After? Yeah, to, to, like, thank to you so much. The like, town's so much better now, I think. And the, or but like, then it turns out that the entire country's out of whack because the dragon was, was actually protecting keeping something. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, like that kind of stuff. So, I think that's like that's pretty cool to see that, like the back end of that, um, which I kind of enjoy, just like as like a as a person who likes stories or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, like, oh, what a yeah, that's pretty cool. What a nice little layer to other things. I also love the fact that they were just like the spear hero has been up to this mm-hmm. and this is what the short uh, sword hero has been up to mm-hmm. and nobody knows what the fuck the archery guy is doing yeah, he's, because he's just out he, doing he whatever the fuck. Or something. Yeah. Yeah, he's like in a forest <laughs> or something. No one's seen him or some shit like that. I'm like, whoa, that's cool. So that episode happened. I watched the most recent episode of Promise Neverland mm. and in that episode, um, fucking shit pops off absolutely because it's it's approaching the day where they escape yeah so there's they're getting closer to like trying to like to test the bounds of Mm -hmm. like going over the wall and seeing stuff so there's like there's a bunch of things they're trying to get to motion yeah uh and like the biggest most important thing is to like distract mom before this we see like I mean, obviously, spoilers for Promise Neverland. Sorry if you're... Huge fucking spoilers, spoilers about so, yeah. this, because this episode has three pretty pivotal things that go on in it, and I'm really happy that they had this all in one episode. Mm-hmm. I was afraid that they might do cliffhangers like at certain the, yeah, points. Yeah. yeah, so if you want, if you don't want it spoiled, go watch the show, come back. Um, but here it is. Anyways, Sister Crone uh, mm-hmm. gets killed. Yeah. Um, she, yeah, she's sent to another facility to be a mom, yeah, but she, then it turns out... Winky mm, blinky, yeah. She's mm. actually being set up to be killed. She leaves behind and, uh, like um, a note and a package and a pen and, and we don't know what any of that stuff yeah. means and we don't you know i think i don't know who she left it to if it's ray or if it's yeah um what's the other one name the, the norman liar, norman that's yeah. it norman um but she left it behind to somebody yeah um something else that happens is like uh mom fucking dumps ray and says you're fired essentially mm-hmm. like you're no longer my spy go fuck yourself and yeah ray's like but i've been doing so good and he's like she's like you're a fucking traitor you did good, but you're a traitor. Yeah. And, uh, you know, showing us that mom's not dumb. Like, mom... Like, I know what mom you guys knows have a been bunch doing. Of shit. Like, mom's, like, 
she's the fucking big bad. Like, yeah, I've been letting you guys do this, and she's super creepy too. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, oh, I love Sister it. Cron was like super creepy. Well, she's creepy in like a psychotic way, but this the mom is also super fucking creepy in a calculated way, super which terrifying. is scarier. Yeah, to me. for sure. Um, and then we see, you know, the other bit is like mom confronts Norman and uh, fucking Emma. Emma. Uh, like, both, like right at the wall. And essentially, yeah. like, shows, like, all the cards on the table. I loved this. She's, She's like, like hey, hey, I know what's up. I know you know what's up. You guys are essentially meat. I'm taking care of you guys. But I fucking love you guys, which is super scary, right? Like, I just want you guys to live a great life. You guys are going to be eating. Get over it or whatever. And Emma's not having it. And so mom breaks her fucking leg. And, like, it's brutal. It's really fuck. It's something that really took me by surprise. Like, holy shit. Like, I know. And the part that really fucked me up, too, because, like, the fact that she gets her leg broken, that's going to really affect the Everything. escape thing you know like imagine like because she was like she's a, a very important character she's like mm. a super super good at leading and stuff and she she's is very, the main character she's very physically strong or whatever yeah legs broken that's gonna hurt a lot of your plans yeah she is the one that's most physically capable but the part that i like so much about that interaction is she starts out and she's like i know everything you know everything let's just be up front with each other yeah. this feels good this is the first time that i could be completely honest with and you not guys. pretend to you guys yeah yeah and like you could be completely honest with me think, and now everything's out in the open this is great i think this is something like i'm meeting you guys for the first yeah. time you're meeting me the real me for the first time this mm-hmm. is amazing and like it's just so fucking creepy yeah and i'm like wow that's actually very true yeah. and that's crazy to think about that you raised these kids for 12 years now but they like, don't know anything this is about who you. i am yeah yeah so she breaks emma's leg and then she also at the end announces that uh norman is going to be his set date for being shipped out yeah. has been processed it's like been it's bumped. been prompted and so yeah. like he will be probably the next person to be sent out to be yeah. you know munched on which did is they super, tell you a date no they didn't say a date they, okay. got, they just ends there um so yeah, that a, that's the one thing that of course they're not going to tell you but if they i feel like it could have gone either way if they told you the date as like a cliffhanger i wonder why they didn't i don't know all i know i'm is excited though i think we're on episode that was eight, that was eight. right so there's four more left. nine ten eleven twelve so you kind of have to f- try to think you know, because, you know, you read the manga yeah, or whatever, so yeah. you have a better idea of what could possibly get done. I have no idea where they're going to go, where they're going to end it, if they're going to add things or what's going to happen. But I'm saying your guess is better than my guess because yeah. I have no idea what's possible. Mm-hmm. So all I know is that Emma is now hurt. Norman's day has been pump, bumped up. So, like, there's, like, so many things. There's, like, well, do they escape separately? Do they... Does, his, does he somehow not get sent out? You know, there's just like so many, like what happens? Does she leave with a bum leg or whatever? Mm-hmm. Cause I know, obviously I know they escape. I've seen like images from fucking just on the internet or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, um, so you and I were talking about this. The fact that she got her leg broken really took me by surprise. Like it really like, holy shit. Oh, it shocked came me. Came out of nowhere, right? I was you like, know? what in the fuck? Just they because, can do that? Just because she's our main character, right? Just yeah. because like, you're like, she's essentially the Naruto. She's the fucking, yeah. you know, she's like. I mean, it's one thing to like kill off a main character. It's another thing to be like. To maim them. We're ruining everything. Yeah, yeah. Like it's kind of like the moment in uh, The Walking Dead where Rick gets his hand chopped off yeah, yeah. in the comics. Yeah, you're you're like, like, holy like, what shit. what in the fuck? Like this is our main character. How are you yeah. going to chop off his arm or whatever? Yeah. Exactly. His hand or whatever. I get what you're saying. So. That bit was like did really surprise me, but mm-hmm. the other stuff again, and, it, and this isn't the anime's fault. It's just fucking social media and mm-hmm. everything else because I've seen images and stuff. I know, and just like kind of like exactly like The Walking Dead because I've read some of the comic books and, and stuff like that. Like, and because I know other things like how long people's contracts are. Yeah, I know they're gonna be okay. I know they're gonna escape. I know, like, I know just these things. I don't know how it happens. I don't know when it happens. So I'm very excited for you to see what happens. Yeah. I'm super excited to see what happens too. Um, one thing that they didn't, this is the part that I'm most worried about is that I don't know how they're going to fit that amount of content into the last four episodes without it starting like a new story new arc. arc yeah. That, yeah. Um, it, which would need more elaboration. And what I'm worried about is there is a time jump. I will tell you that within uh-huh. this period, there is going to be a time jump and Excuse I won't me. tell you why or what happens in between it, but I'm very worried that they won't do what the manga did, not gonna do which it. is yeah. they did that time jump. You're still following and you're like, well, what's going to happen now? And then you see everything that's been happening over that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in flashbacks like, or no, it just like, it kind of tells you like, this is the situation now. This is what's been going on. And I'm afraid that we're going to see it like each step of the way instead of the way that they kind of show things that are happening. I don't know. Cause they do it in a really clever way that you wouldn't really 
know what's been going on because it seems like nothing's happened. Yeah. And then clearly stuff has happened. For sure. Because, of course, they're fucking everyone's a genius in this show is what it comes down to, which is why it's so compelling to be able to like watch and see these characters interact in new ways. Um, but yeah, it depends on how they handle that situation. So I hope that they just go for the time jump and then tell you what's been going on. Because honestly, it's not worth giving enough time to it for it to be like, oh, that was a well worth it episode. You know, what's but funny who knows? is that I think um, I think I was aware of the time jump. Again, mm-hmm. just because of fucking social media and stuff like that. And people like us that talk about it on the oh, podcast. Yeah, yeah. You know, like just hearing about the, the show. Yeah. Um, I know there is a, a jump of time somewhere. So I'm curious to see what happens, uh, honestly, yeah. for that show. I, I really do like it. I think it looks great. And uh, I'm invested to see what happens here. Yeah. Okay, what else? The only other anime I think I watched is... Runny Boys? Is Runny Boys. Because I caught up with Runny Boys. They're on episode 19. It's Run only, with the Wind, yeah. Yeah. It's, um, I, see, I called it Runny Boys the other I day. Know. And someone said, what the fuck? I'm like, oh, Run with the Wind, sorry. <laughs> I, I'm just like clarifying for yeah. everyone out there. Someone's like the typing, like, what the fuck is Runny Boys? Um, but yeah, so... <laughs> it's only... It's I think there's eggs. I think there's only 22 episodes. Um, we're on 19... So we're pretty close to the end. They've gotten to the their goal, which is like yeah, this, they're this in the competition, country like race thing, and like they all yeah. take a leg of the race. And I'm surprised at the pace that they're going at because they started the episode. And I was like, okay, cool. There's so 19, 20, 21, 22. So like four episodes. Like there's four episodes. Like mm-hmm. I wonder how they're going to split up the, split this up, you know? Because there's ten characters, right? Um, they showed us three legs of the race. And then the start of the fourth one, I was like, huh, okay, cool. So obviously other stuff's going to happen, you know, because, you know, if they keep at that pace, they're going to finish before it's actually done or yeah. something's going to happen. I'm really liking it. We've seen a lot of the characters grow. Like the first guy that did the first part of the race was Prince and he did it. And uh, people were like assuming that the reason he did the first part of the race is because like he's the slowest, he's the weakest. Yeah. And uh, the actual reason is like the coach is like, no, I think like you're super calm. I think like... You should be at the front. I think you won't be nervous. And I have like this theory that the beginning of this race isn't going to be super fast like other races. Like we've seen in the last, like he's done his heat research like over the last like four or five years, like the start of the race had been super fast. And I think we've been, they've been researching and being like realizing that's not the proper way to do it. So the smartest thing to do is put your slowest person at the start or whatever. And he's telling him like, honestly, all you have to do is keep pace to this. And like, even if you're last, just get this time. And he does, which is super great. Nice. Yeah. And then the next character is the, uh, the foreign exchange student who is like African, you know, mm-hmm. and people have been talking mad shit because they, they say stuff like, Oh, you know, it's cheating that they're importing, you know, uh, foreign exchange students. And not only them, there's other schools that do it too yeah. or whatever. And so he doesn't feel any kind of way about it because people talk shit and like the only reason he's here is because he's a good runner. He wasn't a runner. You know, he, he just kind of learned to run, um, in, you know, he was tricked into running essentially. Yeah. And so he doesn't feel bad about it. And, um, but there's other pe- other racers who are like African who very like, clear that yeah. they were poached yeah. or whatever. But they but they talk to him and they 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 are showing this like level of respect. They're just like, cool man, I'm really glad to race with you because the second part of the race, it's a really long portion of it, and um, a lot of people are calling it like the the ace spot. Like that's where you put that's where you're supposed to put your best yeah. runner or whatever. And so they put him there. He 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 was running faster than he was supposed to, but he got this like this surge of energy, and I think he passed like seven no like four or five people like he he did really good and then the third part of the race was one of the twins the older twin who while he's running like he's like confessing to like the audience like he's not going to run next year he can see that his brother is going to run next year because he has a passion for it he's like even though they're identical twins they're different people or whatever like he doesn't he doesn't feel that way or whatever yeah and he sees that his brother does have a rifle in the the one of the main characters or whatever like he wants to beat him one day so like cool I support you, but this is a journey you're going to do on your own because it's time for us to like, to like separate, which is like, Oh, it's super sweet. And he's running, he's doing a good time. Like, you know, and then I think a character on the sideline like says something like, Oh, she's there to see him. And he thinks, Oh fuck, does she like me? And like, he gets super hyped and he just starts fucking bolting. Like he just kills it. He, he passes so many people. He hands off the, like the, it's not a baton. It's like a, it's a sash that they're wearing. Yeah. And he like hands it to his other brother and he's just like, Oh fucking! He's like he's, he's like telling his brother like, "Yo, homie, I think so and so likes me." And the other brother's like, "What?" He's just like freaks his fucking mind out. And then the episode cuts like, "Ah, oh, fucking dope!" I've become invested in these characters' stories essentially. Yeah. So like, it's cool to see that it's coming to an end. And then we've also seen like other things that have hinted at like not the best of ending because 
the the leader coach guy he's been going to the doctor and uh-huh. it's like his injury has been like reaggravated so this might be the last time that he runs and then the person that's doing i think the seventh or eighth portion of uh-huh. like the race um has a like a he's sick like he has a cold or whatever and like he looks like he's like barely standing Oof. and he's i thought he wasn't gonna make the race but like he has he gotten out of bed and gotten a ride and he's like waiting at his like at his checkpoint like i was like holy shit i wonder what's gonna happen so there's a lot of things in the show i'm i really like it and uh i can't wait to see how it ends i haven't i'm like i think i did the math i think I'm like six episodes behind on slime and uh next week we'll probably just pound through a bunch of it i've been hearing a lot of people say they don't you know they're not happy with where it's going i mean it's not that i'm not happy it's just but, that you I, know not just you i'm just saying like other people yeah. it's like they're, they're, no i know it's That's, like it's different and like it's and I was like, that's I think my issue is that they changed what they're doing, but they're not making it as compelling as it was originally. Just being like, well, what new shit's going to happen? Instead, it's like, well, I mean, there's not really much shit that can happen. So each thing that they come up with, they're like, mm, now here's the story and uh, enjoy it. And it like slowly kind of starts unfolding, but not in a way that makes you care about it too much. It feels like everything's getting wrapped up a lot quicker than it should. Yeah. Or it, it there's not enough excitement behind everything. Every episode has me like laugh at certain parts or yeah. like get like hyped up. But it has like essentially it just have that. It's just started yeah. to decline essentially. Yeah, because we used to be like it used to just be on the up, but now uh-huh. it's just kind of maybe plateaued is a perfect is a better word. Yeah, I think it, it went down a little bit and then it plateaued. Yeah, well, so nothing anyways, wrong with but that. I'll watch it's, that next it's week. Fine. There's other shows I need to catch up on, um, but I'll get around to them. Yeah, I'm excited for you to watch Mob. Um, also watch some Haikyuu. Because okay. it's fun, and Kyle and I are trying to finish that before the new season comes out. Uh, and there's a really great team that was in this last little arc because they're at this big tournament, and the first team that they go up against, they're like psychos in some way. It, like all of them feel like they're so full of energy and so different than anyone else. And essentially, their their school slogan is just like like stay focused and like them all stay focused and like concentrate and work hard. But for them, they're like, no man, try everything, do everything, have fun. So the main dude who he actually has a tongue piercing, which they know they don't make any point of it, but he has it. And Mm -hmm. I just like that. They have all these characters that I feel like never seen an anime character with the tongue piercing before. That's cool. They don't make a big point of it, but he has it. He's also Um, in high school. Yeah. uh, Yeah. They're in high school. (laughs) That's strange. I don't think I've ever seen in high school. I had a friend in high school that had a tongue piercing. Really? He was a junior. Yeah. Wow. I know. Right? Wow. I wonder what it was like when it when you made out with them. Probably yeah. nice. Nah. It's okay. It was okay. All right. You know. I'm too. I don't want to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> too weird of a joke for me, I guess. Right now. Um. Anyways, I just like that they they have these different characters that they normally show like, oh, this character is kind of related to that one in some way, or this is their dichotomy and their team. But for this one, it's just like. Nope, we just like to have fun, and we work really hard at having fun, and we have fun. And they're good, but they're not, like, focused. So there are times where it gets bad, but they're like, let's try some weird shit. And it's a really quick arc where it's essentially just like, check out this kick-ass fun team. And then a few episodes later, you're like, wow, I care about that team a lot, but they are not going to go anywhere. Mm -hmm. And then I I just like that they, they introduce all these new characters, and they actually make you care about the enemy per se in yeah. quotations <laughs> you gotta uh, call them the enemies <laughs> i guess so. it's animated i mean they're the, currently the villains in this arc because they're trying to hit the ball on the other side of the court that you don't want it to be hit on Ooh. yeah i know um so anyways it i just like that they have these short little stories about all these different characters that you wind up caring about and you're like man i hope that they really like grow as people and i just care so much about them but now they're gone forever Mm -hmm. it's really cool the show's able to do that and that's uh that's one of the reasons that i like this show so much is that they put a heavy focus on whoever our main characters are going up against and they make you sympathize with them and you're like man Clearly, I want my guys to win, but like, if the other guys won, I wouldn't be as disappointed as I would be if it was a big villain team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Well, that's cool, man. It's neat. It's pretty fun. Okay. Well, um, let's get into the news, yeah? I would love to talk about the news. So, hey, man, there's a little show called JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Well, season one is going to come to Netflix on March 8th, which is Friday, which means that this weekend, we're going to binge it no, together. Not. Okay. No, we're not. Well, that was, you know, whatever. But yeah, I thought that was interesting that JoJo's is coming to Netflix. Mm, I think JoJo's on Crunchyroll, right? Like a lot of it is. It is, yeah. I would assume the reason it's there is because 
it's acquired some sort of popularity, like a cult following. And Netflix, like, we got to get on this. Here's the thing that I don't know what's going to happen. Because it's Crunchyroll, because it's been Crunchyroll for so long, a large part, and we've talked about this on the podcast before, of JoJo's is making musical references yeah, and we stuff. Have, yeah. um, but it's it's a little bit censored. And by a little bit, I mean it's heavily censored in the Crunchyroll version because they're not able to make these references without like certain licensing and whatnot. I don't know why. Japan could do it, but as soon as it comes to the United States, it becomes big no. Mm -hmm. So anyways, I'm not sure if the Netflix version is going to be big no, or if it's going to be Japan's like vision I get what you're of saying. this. Yeah. Um, well, if it's, you said the first season of JoJo's, right? Mm -hmm. Well, anyways, from what I've heard from a lot of people, the first season is pretty bad. Oh, yeah, you can Most skip people it. just skip the first season. Absolutely. So I guess it doesn't really matter. because <laughs> you No, know, it doesn't affect that. Because there's no fucking all, way I'm whatever. watching it. You know? No. So, anyways, that's that's news. Yeah. <laughs> Some more news is that there's a new Gintama anime in the works. Uh, this was confirmed at a Gintama fan event. I feel like we announced that a while ago. Like, there's like there was also another new Gintama in the works. Gintama is just always gonna happen. Oh, right? But they're like, hey man, here's new some new Gintama shit. dog. No, oh, okay. but it, I remember specifically like a few years like. <laughs> a couple years ago probably being like hey man king tom is coming back for a new season or whatever. and it did and it did so yeah. it's happening again well, just you know this keeps happening don't worry about good, it it's good cool. for good for them gintama from so they, there's a lot of it they but didn't from what say I've seen, if it's gonna be a new season or if it's gonna be a movie or whatever cool. but from what we've seen of gintama i have enjoyed it it is fun so um but it's not worth going back to it i imagine it's a lot of work uh, yeah definitely here i'm gonna make an edit to my uh my script really quick because i had a typo <laughs> silly me embarrassing it's a little bit silly but don't worry about it so anyways here's a bunch of shit that you don't have any idea what i'm talking about it's okay though because i don't have any idea either but for those of you out there that know what i'm about to say y'all the real motherfuckers that's what i have to say so, Prisma Ilya's upcoming OVA is now going to be titled Fate Kaliad Liner Prisma Ilya Prisma Phantasm, and it's set to release this year. I'm super stoked. There were two stars in the things that I was saying. What a dumb fucking name. <laughs> What's dumb about that? It's super long and dumb. <laughs> I like long, dumb things. It's fucking great. That's what I like about Whatever. Your dick. <laughs> you want to talk? I'm not doing this. Go for it. The Yamanashi Prefecture in Japan has had an increase of tourism thanks to laid back camp, which is Good pretty cool. Them, yeah. It's always neat to see the influence of the, and I say this every time that there is, but that it's with, really neat whenever there's this influence. Where, this, where fake stuff, um, like affects the real place because mm -hmm. just, anime loves, you know, placing things in real life places or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, that, that is a lot of fun as I wish that would happen more in the United States. Or I mean, I was just watching the B in apartment 23 and they made a reference to Chico state. Oh, fuck. Yeah. They just use it as a college. Like, yeah, me and my roommate that I went to Chico state with and I was like, Oh, cool. I they didn't even Chico say state. anything. Yeah. Like, Oh man, I know a man at Chico state right now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we made a fake language together. You remember when I was talking about her? I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, whatever. That's awesome. Yeah, and Chico State, that's fine, whatever. So anyways, a new original anime from the team who made ReZero has been announced for the summer, and it's titled Gronbelm. Nice. I saw something about this. Uh, cool. I know people really like ReZero, so good for them. Hey, another thing people really like that's good for them? That time I got reincarnated as a slime. Well, it's OVA unfortunately has been delayed to december 2019 what are we gonna do wait until december this year good plan <laughs> probably yeah, good plan i mean we're almost there right yeah we're just like eight, eight nine ten eleven twelve months away twelve months away yeah. no that's wrong that's for sure wrong <laughs> nine months away <laughs> So, yeah, that's going to be fun. Uh, that's all the news that I have for you. I hope you enjoyed my news. Uh, my name is Chris Trivlet. You can call me anytime you need me. Okay. With more news. Okay. Welcome back to the news. I just got some more news. Don't worry. We're not moving on to our next topic. So, One Punch Man Season 2 has a new premiere date. It's going to be on Hulu. And uh, you want to guess the date? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's not January, February, or March. No, it's okay. definitely not. It's not going to be this next season of anime. Okay, well, that's a bold prediction. I just feel like it's not. It's going to be in the fall. It's going to be sometime in September. Oh, okay. So, April 9th on Fuck. Hulu. Fucking idiot. 
March. Damn, that's next month. <laughs> yeah, so in like a full month, we're going to be able to see One Punch Fan Season 2. The first episode's going to premiere on Hulu. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe to Hulu in order to not miss that special. So yeah, anyways, we're done with the news. For real now. For real edition. Done with the news. <laughs> High score girl. We're talking about it. Yeah. We're wheeling. We're dealing. We watched it on Netflix. Mm-hmm. You watched it on a Netflix. month ago. Yeah, how many episodes? 12. Okay. Yeah, 12 episodes of High Score Girl. Heck yeah. Hey, man, Studio JC staff made this. Um, I don't know if you've heard of them, but they've made a couple of little things like Food Wars, Flying Witch, and One Punch Man Season 2. Perfect segue right there. That's fucking wild because their stuff usually looks like really fucking good. <laughs> You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're getting into it, you motherfuckers. Get ready. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, if you really want to watch the show, check it out on Netflix. We're going to spoil it, so just full spoilers for everybody. Yeah. Um, look, All right, initial reaction. Dude, this show looks uh, ugly as fuck. But you get used to it really quick. That is very true. The, some, the one thing that kind of that really had me bumming about the show was it looks like shit, right? It's pretty shitty looking. By episode... I want to say like four or five. I was like, you know what? I don't mind how shitty it looks. It's this weird like combination of like uh like three D animation and mm-hmm. like and two D effects or something like that, right? Yeah, like sometimes if you see a front on shot of somebody, looks like normal ass two D anime. Mm-hmm. If you see the move, you start throwing up a little bit, oh, but yeah. it's fine. Yeah, no, um, and I don't understand. Like, I would understand if it's like fucking, you know polygon pictures or something like oh you're just <laughs> right you're i just was just trash. waiting in the credits just like are you here yeah are you coming for me polygon what's happening like if it's like a shitty studio like that i wouldn't understand but like yeah. it's jc staff so like my only my only like guess is it wasn't the a team or the b team you know <laughs> it's like <laughs> it was like the c team and the only reason the c team got around to it was like we have some budget left over for this year you guys want to make that shitty passion project that lee keeps talking about it's like Sure do, man. Honestly, Lee's passion project was full of passion. That was all passion. That's pretty much all this show is. Uh, if you are a fan of video games, especially uh, early 90s, late 80s, arcade, arcade especially games. fighting genre arcade games, yeah. this show was made for you. Yeah, like um, I'm not, like, a, like I like say all the time, I'm not the most versed when it comes to video games. You obviously way more into I know them. a little bit more about video games. So yeah, that's when it was, true. When it was called High Score Girl, I thought she'd be playing like, you know, some sort of like different variation types, like different types of video games. She plays a lot of video games, really fucking old ones. Some that I barely know about, you know, like mm-hmm. I know, obviously you know about Street Fighter and Mortal yeah. Kombat and like Virtual Fighter. And then like eventually like, as the tech and in Darksiders yeah. and the sequel to Darksider. Yeah. Like there's just ones, some things there's that you're kind of missing. But there's just some that like I have no fucking clue what yeah. they're talking about. And the fact that like this this character who uh is who's in it like has this huge passion for video games mm-hmm. and like he super geeks out about it, I can really appreciate. Yeah. Because like I have those kind of things where I'm like, I really like this thing and I love talking about it. So he mm-hmm. loves talking about video games. But therein lies the problem because yeah. that's his personality. That's oh, all he is. Oh yeah. He's a he's a no garbage depth. he's a garbage person who just loves arcade video games. There's a point where one of his friends describes him and they say like, yeah, he's a really passionate guy and he also he's so honest and so kind. And I'm like is he? Because he's kind of an asshole in every single scene that I see him in, but that's fine. That's called honesty and kindness, homie. The thing is that I think if this character were like, you know, uh, if his passion were like, you know, fucking directed towards something like curing cancer, he would cure it. <laughs> that's true. He'd be a dick. He'd be like a Doctor Strange kind of asshole about it. Like, yeah. I'm really fucking good at saving people's lives. Go fuck yourself. But he just decides to, to put all his effort and hard work and dedication and passion into dumbass video games. And especially because, yep. like, I thought maybe it'd be like, I thought that the, it would be more recent, you know, kind of like, because this is obviously in the what, 70s, 80s or 70s, 90s, or whatever. <laughs> it's very late 80s, 80s, 80s early 90s. 90s. Yeah. So what I thought was like maybe be more recent. And I thought, okay, cool. He can actually like pursue a career as like a professional gamer, you know? Yeah. Because he dev. doesn't seem to have a passion to make video games, which no. is something that people who like, just because you play video games a lot doesn't also mean you want to make them, you know? Which is absolutely true. Like, yeah. for example, Kyle, our friend Kyle, who DMs for us, he has no desire to make video games, not interested in it whatsoever, but he, 
knows more about video games than anyone that I know. I think his whole life is just watching video games. Like he doesn't watch Netflix. He only watches anime with me. Yeah. Because you make him. Yeah. (laughs) Because I make him. Yeah. But what's funny too is like, I have talked to Kyle and he, he has like kind of like, you know, like a screenwriter would, he's like, yeah, if I could make my passion project, he's has like a, the layout for like, yeah, if I could make a video game, it'd be this, but he's not like one of those people like, I have to make this video game. And so this character that's so because it's like in the early you know late 80s early 90s or whatever because he has this like goal of making video games in his life and pro gaming isn't a thing yet i was like what are you gonna do like you can't go pro in these kinds of games right i mean like you i mean i guess there was like street fighter champions i mean there are competitive scenes but that's not how you can make all your money right exactly so i was like so you think about like maybe they they could have added things to make him more you know a little more realistic essentially he's he's very in that like uh that kind of haze of childhood where you're just like, I'm going to be a fucking fireman because it's the best. And then you go, he's up, in like fifth grade or some but you know shit. Maybe. Like it's, yeah. You know, it's, it's just, it's like that, that idea of like, I want to be this because it's cool. And then you realize like, yo, it's fucking hard to be a firefighter. Like, or it's hard to be a policeman. Not all of us can be the president or whatever, you know? Yeah. Uh, how about we, how about we talk about like the characters in the story real quick before we get back into bashing it? The story is, there's a kid who likes video games mm-hmm. and then there's a girl who's good at video games. Mm-hmm. He gets mad at her because he's better than her or she's better than him and he can't beat her. And then he finds an appreciation for her and winds up falling for her, but he denies it and doesn't realize it. And she does the same thing. She never talks. Well, she doesn't talk at all. There, When this first happens, this first part of the story, they're in grade school, right? Yeah. They're in like fifth grade. So yeah, they're, they're pretty young. So they're like, what 10-ish right? yeah nine or ten uh-huh. um and and then like um i think the story is like they become friends begrudgingly like mm-hmm. she's kind of like the goody two shoes and like super prissy and like, i think comes from a very wealthy family and uh he's just like this again this garbage person who likes arcade games <laughs> she's not even a goody two shoes she's but she i mean she is. She's like the star pupil of everything. Every looks up to her. Everything. She's like. She's. Everybody thinks she's perfect. Like essentially. Like, yeah. All her classmates are like she's the best, and she's. But she obviously like all she wants to do is play video games because she's good at them or whatever. She's just. She's good at everything she does. Yeah. And that's her character. She's good at everything she does, and she's Sundere as fuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that what? Yeah. She is Sundere as fuck. I guess. Um. She doesn't talk, and she just beats the shit out of our main character. For sure. And doesn't want. <laughs> She might be more yandere. It's hard to tell, but it's a weird amalgamation of something. Absolutely, yeah. But she, um, they become friends because they have a passion for video games, and he considers her his rival because mm-hmm. he can admit that she is a superior gamer than him. Absolutely, right? yeah. And then uh, I think, like, I feel like it's maybe a little before midway in the series, she moves away to America. It's like episode three. Yeah, she like she moves away and she's gonna study abroad. And then we get a time jump, and now he's older. He's in junior high. Mm. He's still up to his fucking shady ways. He just likes playing video games in yeah. the arcades. He's met another girl now. Um, he kind of corrupts her, and she also starts playing video games because she likes him, right? Yeah, which also, why does she fucking like him? Because all he does is play video games and he's get fucking really hot bad as grades. Fuck. Um, but yeah, she, she likes him because he's passionate about something. That's what it comes down to, which exactly. is a legitimate thing. Yeah. If somebody's really passionate about video games and can like talk about them in not so much just like, dude, games are fun. Like, duh. if somebody talks about them in more like, yeah, they're making this game soon and this game did well because of these things. And like, he knows his he has, shit. He has like a vast knowledge and something that she has no idea about. You know, I feel like she was also kind of like, I don't know what the right word of it. It's not listless, but she just didn't, didn't really have passion for no, anything. Absolutely. Yeah. She was just kind of, she didn't find anything in her life that brought her that kind of joy. So she was, and, so she's very curious about him. Yeah. And she could admire the passion that somebody has because she lacks it mm-hmm. and which is also a very common thing to admire it's like it's different than jealousy being jealous of somebody finding it but just like man good for them like i want to have that and like mm-hmm. maybe if i check out whatever they're checking out maybe i'll find what makes it click for them exactly. and then i can make something click for me yeah so she the reason she starts seeing him more is because her dad owns like a a bottle dispensary like he sells alcohol or whatever and he yeah. puts a uh an arcade machine outside of his fucking business mm-hmm. and he starts coming around more often to yeah. play and that's how that whole new budding relationship kind of starts i wouldn't call it a bottle dispensary it's more of a liquor store Is it a so liquor it's store? like yeah. kids wouldn't really come around there because it's not a candy shop yeah 
but that they, they do they do sell some, stuff some sort but, of business yeah. yeah um and then as the story progresses our um the the original love interest the girl who went to the united states comes back and yep. now now they're in high school i think right uh they are still in junior high the end of junior high though uh yeah i mean yeah sure yeah because um you know they 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 it takes a while for the friendship to come back to fruition or whatever she yeah. has Still gotten good at video games. They he, also kind of admitted that they cared about each other yeah, as absolutely. she was leaving. So yeah, um, but the, it, it was really awkward, which is a realistic thing. You know, yeah. whenever you see someone you kind of have feelings for, and then mm-hmm. you go away and come back, it's just this awkward moment. Which I feel like they did, they did, they did a pretty okay job, did appropriately. Yeah, especially with the uh, characters that they are, it made complete sense. It would be a little bit different for somebody who's normal, but for these crazy Weirdos, ass, yeah, yeah. For sure. okay. And so then, uh, you know, they. The story progresses. He kind of confesses his feelings towards her, and he tries to get in the same high school as her because she's going to get into like a super good high school. She's super smart, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, he tries really hard. He kind of puts down video games. He tries to focus his energy on studying and getting good grades or whatever, and he doesn't get into the school or whatever. Well, there's also a pretty big arc in the middle of that yeah. where they uh, they both show up to the same video game tournament. They oh, both yeah. skipped out on a school vacation yeah. uh, or trip or whatever so that they could go to this competition so they're playing street fighter together and they get to the final round and it's a tournament where they're just up against each other and then he beats her and he he worked really hard to beat her too Mm -hmm. and then like he's hanging out afterwards and he's got his trophy and then he hears one of the techs go like oh man wait this button's not working oh man it probably didn't work when that motherfucker freaked out and smashed the fuck out of the machine yeah Oh, does that mean that that chick was doing the whole fight without using this button? Yeah, she only had like heavy punches and heavy kicks. She had yeah. no, like she couldn't do fast punches or fast kicks. Um, so that's like he's upset because she didn't say anything. Um, so he feels like the win was like kind of like what's the word like it was pitiful. tarnished. Oh, yeah, it was. It was yeah. You know, anyways, and then she beats the shit out of him the way he does or whatever. Yeah, and they become friends again. Yeah. Um. Anyways, and the high school thing happens. Another time jump. He is now going to a different school. He's got a part-time job. He doesn't see the uh, the gaming girl very often. The other no. girl who he whose dad owns the liquor store or whatever. They've also kind of like they're not in the same class anymore. Well, so she's, well, she's gone to I think an all girl school. Yeah, and uh, but she has also gotten really good video games mm-hmm. and like she uh, actually found passion in it because mm-hmm. at first she was just like oh you know I'll just watch you play games. And he's like come on no like play it I want it yeah and then they fight each other and she does really well because she's button mashing but she finds like the good combos very quickly. She's like a natural essentially. Yeah, it, which is dumb but whatever <laughs> like, it's, it's, cool. it's made up it doesn't have to make yeah. sense you know <laughs> it's fine um, uh, but yeah in that she she adopts the passion for gaming and she winds up realizing that she's good at it and she could play very well mm-hmm. and she doesn't just watch people anymore she still enjoys watching she partakes in it though but yeah now she's also a participant she's a gamer girl dog girls are gamers too girls can be gamers too um and the way that this then this all kind of ends with like uh her this the second girl who owns a bottle shop or what we were just talking yeah, about blonde hair she confesses her feelings to our main character and says i'm gonna fucking i want to play you and if i win like i you gotta be my fucking boyfriend yeah and he's like what and because he's the most oblivious idiot in the world he's like oh what nani what you know i have no <laughs> nani the fuck did this come from yeah exactly because he's like i thought we were just fucking gaming buds or whatever but he's like no dude this bitch obviously likes you and um that's kind of how like this the whole show ends mm-hmm. so it ends on a very like cliffhangery very yeah. cliffhangery moment um i mean it's very clear i thought it was very clear like oh obviously um there's gonna be a second part of this and netflix is gonna drop it whenever the fuck they want to and Maybe. it's been announced they, they, they're getting a, a second season um yeah they are. it's gonna happen yeah so that's that's essentially the whole a very very simplified rundown of this because sh- mm-hmm. of the show because a lot of stuff happens but you know how you and i will talk about stuff and when we describe it we go like a lot of stuff happens but it's just a bunch of bullshit you know yeah I mean, okay, so this show, that's the overarching story. Mm -hmm. Uh, Getting into the characters, we already kind of told you what they are. None of them change over the course of the show. The most dynamic character is the blonde-haired girl, Mm -hmm. I think, Mm -hmm. because she develops that passion, and she finds it, and she feels better because of it. She still does have a crush on him as time goes on, and she realizes that. And she uh, she just wants to... Date him, be, whatever. Be fuck with him, yeah. Yeah, that's all good. And we get to see a lot more of her internal dialogue, and it has more about feelings and emotions and, and personality and desire and all of that shit. Mm-hmm. 
Then our main character, who's just like, I fucking love video games. This is how you do this move. Oh, my God. She's doing that move. Who would have thought that? Mm-hmm. She chose Akuma on her first try. Oh, what? man. I'm so relieved that I got to choose Akuma and not Brown Ryu. Although I've never fucked this up. He's like, she's never fucked it up. What in the fuck? Yeah. I don't know. Our idiot kid main character <laughs> is so goddamn obsessed with video games. He doesn't think about anything it's, in a real way. It's pretty gross. And it's true that he his, his characterization stays pretty linear. Like, he does physically grow like he does you yeah know, and he he matures in the sense of like he has a part-time job so he can fund his gaming habit or whatever yeah, you know, which like, is a realistic thing yeah, yeah um the only part where he actually like i feel like grows as a character is the little tiny arc where he puts all the video games down for a bit and he says i'm gonna try hard to get in the same school as you do mm-hmm. that way we can continue to be together even though we're not together kind of yeah thing. i thought that that was a really, that good, was really thing. good but it was very it was very fleeting. Like it came and went, and before yeah. he knew it, he's back in his, you know, in the the character he is, which is mm-hmm. just fucking garbage. Also, I guy. really like that they were also like, he's gonna do it. Look at him go, and then he, he fucking doesn't. Oh yeah, I really like the fact they didn't do it because I was like, I was looking at you know the episode list. I was like, okay, cool. He'll get it. He'll get into the school, and then we'll have a few episodes of them being in high school together. And it's, it's the end of the show. The show did a couple of good things, and that was probably the best thing it did, For I sure. thought. Uh, but to see that he failed, I was like, this is fucking great. Because realistically, people fail all the time. More yeah. often than not, you know. Yeah, the hero's journey, they actually followed it. Yeah, because, like, why, you know, it, you can't just study that they have really hard a couple weeks before and and everything work out great. This isn't, that's, that's made up. You know, that's people who really want to get into things. They try really hard for a lot of times. They fail a lot and they eventually get it. You know, it's not like snap. It all happens. Cause that's yeah. too fucking, it's too pristine. It's too clean. It just doesn't really happen that way. I mean, it happens for some people, but that's, mm-hmm. it's very rare. Yeah. Um, but I do agree. The show was very like, very kind of stale, very like, huh. yeah, I think that was it. So the people that I think it reaches the most are people that have that nostalgia or maybe they missed out on it and they've always wanted it to be a part of that arcade scene. As for me, I always wished that I could have a fucking arcade where I could go to like a highlight of my childhood is going to Chuck E. Cheese and playing primal rage. Yeah. I fucking loved that. You play as a dinosaur, you beat the shit out of a giant gorilla and you're both covered in blood while there are fans in the background that are just screaming and you're like, yeah, this is dope. I did think that that culture that, um, you know, doesn't exist very much nowadays, you know, um, was, it's pretty cool. And it's cool to see someone, obviously whoever made this or wrote it or whatever, this is some sort of passion of theirs because they're trying to like bottle all this nostalgia in like this 12 episodes or whatever and show it to us. And they accomplished it because I'm right there with them. I'm like, holy shit, that's super cool about this specific character. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that, you know, like our character likes Guile or whatever over Ryu. And then like eventually Guile isn't in the newest Street Fighter. So he picks a a character who's kind of named like Guile or whatever. I'm like, that's... That's, that's I like this. Like, that's fun. That's what you would do. Yeah, sure. And then like they they have like sprites and stuff like that show up from different games and like mm-hmm. they're they're showing how games are evolving and he's talking about all these consoles I've never fucking heard of. You know. Yeah, and it's cool being able to pick them out and be like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. I remember, I remember or that. Kind of heard about this thing. And you know? they don't mention other ones because they weren't as big in Japan. Mm-hmm, yeah, and Which, stuff like that. Exactly as opposed to here in the United States where it's like you have your like your go tos and then like you know something's like you ever heard of a Sega Genesis? Like yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Well, I thought it was pretty funny that it, later on he becomes like obsessed. He's just like, yep, nope, Sega Saturn. That's the only fucking shit. It has to be Sega Saturn. Can't play PlayStation. I can't cheat on PlayStation. Oh, what's super funny is or that. Like, on Sega Saturn. Yeah, whatever. He, he, he's, he's, he's dedicated himself to be like a Sega guy or whatever, you know? Which I think is so funny. Cause that's he, one of the things that I hate. Especially as somebody who loves video games like him, played arcades, and then he becomes this like devout Sega Saturn guy. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, he has all these other consoles and whatnot, but apparently there's a Sega Saturn and PlayStation War. Whatever. Who gives a fuck? What it comes down to is there's still fan bases today that are like, oh yeah, man, PC games only. And like, uh, consoles are cool. And then amongst consoles, it's like, go fuck yourself if you play Xbox. I play PlayStation only. It's just stupid shit. As I, somebody who loves video games, why not just do everything? Whatever. I think, I agree. I think that the argument of that is pretty dumb, especially, um, I really dislike hearing PC Master Race as, as much of a, as a meme it is, you know, like it is, yeah, it does get annoying because people now say it ironically, you know, uh-huh. but some people really do feel that way, you know, and Dude, the, it's blown my mind. Like growing up, I've always played on Mac. My dad used to make games on Mac. So that's just kind of been the household <laughs> machine. 
And uh, then as I get older and older, I'm not able to play these video games with friends. Because and they're people not, have yeah. all these memories of like, oh, yeah, I remember playing this as a kid. And I'm like, cool, I didn't. I played other games that yeah. were a ton of fun, but they were only on Mac. And I have no experience to share with other people because of that. But that being said, like, growing up my whole life, people are like, oh, man, Mac sucks so much. Like, you can't play shit on them, which I thought was such a weird thing, thing to say. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, yeah, I can't. And it sucks. How about you fucking back about up? You back the fuck Why up? are you being a dick about this yeah no but what i will say is i do i do think maybe our bias comes into the fact that yeah we hate our character for doing this mm-hmm. but he's pretty true to form essentially because you know people do. he's very realistic because he's just like you know what sega saturn is gonna be the next thing playstation is gonna be a fucking you know a fart it's in the wind. A flop. it's not gonna yeah. work out and little does you know that fucking playstation is gonna kill it you know like yeah how is he to guess and maybe whoever wrote this, maybe that happened to them and it's like oh, what if and there's probably, probably. There's probably people out there who's like yeah i remember fucking preaching sega saturn and, uh, you know, that's being the next truth. And it wasn't. I was like, that's fucking great. Dude, Sega Dreamcast. I was way in on that. I didn't like the Dreamcast, honestly. See, I loved the Dreamcast. And there wasn't enough on it. Yeah. So it just fell flat. But there were some really unique games on there that I felt like you couldn't find anywhere For else. Sure. No, so I, agree. I don't know. Um, Dude, I definitely understand those arguments of like, this is going to be the next big thing. This is what I support. Like and preaching it, it has like, yeah. No, I totally agree. Like, people are like... It, you haven't I still have that now. It's like, do I play on fucking Xbox? I play on PlayStation. I'm like, fucking get over it. Yeah, it's all bullshit. it's weird. Um, back to our character. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he's just a shit lord. He's just trash. And um, I I want to say because I know you didn't like the show. Yeah, I did. I like the show, and and it's like it's. I mean, I watched all of it, so yeah. I clearly didn't hate it. Hate it. I Obviously. just didn't like it because there's shows that you just drop or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the thing is, like, I think the combination of um. You know, all that cool nostalgia stuff that isn't nostalgic for me, but felt like it was nostalgic. So, like... That's all that I had going yeah. in there. So, all of that. And then the uh, the fact that the love... It's just a love story about, like, a fucking kid. is like, oh, cool. You got me middle school love. You pieces of shit. You know, it's my favorite kind yeah. of love. Yeah. And, um, I mean, it's not like... It's not like the story is well written. And um, it's, like, again, like, the characters, they're pretty weak. The best I, character is the blonde-haired character, yeah, in my opinion. Who has, like, two personality traits versus <laughs> one. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> And the animation is just really fucking gross it's to look weird. at. It's yeah. out there. It, I feel like they, it they does, tried to do something and it worked at times, but it did not always work. It does grow on you. I mean, not like the not like Mob grew on me. Like Mob, I thought was really gross looking, but by the time I got to the episode two or three, I was like, I loved it. Like yeah, I couldn't like, get enough of it. What a good style. Um, this one, one thing, was more tolerable than like you know being like I like this. They have a lot the way of it um, surreal kind of elements to this show too. Uh, there are a lot of points where he's talking to a character from a video game. Usually it's Guile. Yeah. He, and uh, Guile will like kick him or punch him or something and he reacts to it like in real life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's really weird seeing that. And people just act like it's normal shit. Like he's being a goddamn weirdo, but they act like it's normal. Who cares? There are other points too where like his mom's creeping on him, which a lot of people thought that this was best mom, just so you know. Oh, no way. Yeah. People thought <laughs> that she was best mom. Um, so anyways, she she creeps on him. She's like, oh, you have a girl over. <laughs> I'll make her my delicious dessert pancakes like they do over in the East. And I'm going to make so much fucking food and you're going to love it. And then she like creeps in the, the doorway and she starts like moving up and down the crack as if she's lying on her side looking at them. But then she's just, like flying up and down it. And that's the things that like... It takes me out of it because there's so much in it that doesn't feel like it should do that. Yeah. It feels but like, the animation, I feel like, is best when it does do that. It feels... Yeah, I, I agree. Because I feel like they put more work in like this bit of animation as opposed mm-hmm. to like, you're just going to do really poor 3D animation job. Yeah. Um, I agree. The 3D elements worked when they were playing games. Yeah. No, yeah, for I sure. When, yeah. I, and I, I think that, that that was their idea, but... I, I feel like... Um, yeah, those, those things like the mom would do, it felt like some sort of... It felt like anime tropes that like aren't really anime tropes like i like like they're they're trying to create this like this is just a run-of-the-mill anime tropes like no it's not this is this is very weird it felt weird that being said she's not best mom um but she's 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 not best mom whoa but she's not like the worst mom either because wrong with mom there's you know there's like she she does like she was fun she does help the son and like when he's like hey your friend's missing go find her and she's like sends her money so they can split a hotel room or whatever like she's a good person or whatever yeah Fucking, you know what? Best mom. Fuck it. Oh, it's wrong podcast. Uh, Best mom for next year or whatever. Uh, I don't fucking know. Anyways, um, so what if there's a mom in One Punch Man? 
He'll punch her. What he's, about Promise Neverland? He'll punch her. Worst mom. For sure, worst mom. Shut the fuck up. Worst mom. Don't look at me like that. Uh, uh, by the end of the season, we'll talk. Um, I will say <laughs> that uh, I, the thing I hated the most about the entire show was what, it. Was oh. the fact that the chick character didn't say a goddamn yeah, word. Yeah, no. It, she grunted a whole bunch, but she never said anything, and it was like no big deal. Like, like, and they also have another character that's obsessed with her. Which one's that? Oh, the, the creepy he has, like, dude? black stars that appear yeah, around yeah. him. Yeah, he's like, he wants to be super. No, but I'm saying the he fact that. He wants to be popular. The fact that she, she doesn't say anything yeah. drove me nuts. Because I'm waiting the whole time for her to say something. Just say his name. You know, maybe come back to could have feelings. had it like a couple of points. Yeah. You know, say something like, don't go. Something, right? Mm-hmm. But no, she refuses to talk. And somehow it, it's a he. They've built this relationship that's really one-sided from a conversation. It's like mm-hmm. it's like me talking to the wall and being like, the wall sure does love me. And the wall does, but the wall's not talking back. So there is a really good moment in this last episode of Dororo where he uh he's already gained back like his voice and now he's uh he's got like his hearing and I think he gets smelling or something. I don't know, but he's slowly gaining back his senses and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And uh he refuses to talk though. He he just won't do anything, and mm-hmm. he's so, like, overwhelmed with all the noise, and he doesn't like noise, and there are a lot of different elements to it. But then uh in this last episode, after they like, been through some shit, and they, like, taught each other, and they really, you know, they bonded, bonded you know, yeah. at the end of it, um, Hyakumaru says Dororo. He says his name. And Dororo's like, yeah, man. Oh, fuck, dude. That's you me. said my name for yeah. the first time. Like, oh, man. And they have, like, a really special moment because of it. And I felt that, too. I was like... I can't believe he just said his name. And oh, my God. And then the, he was just continuing like normal. He's like, hold the fuck on. You just said my name? Yeah. My man. My and fucking like, dude. I felt so proud of him. And that was just so good. And I feel like if we got that in High Score Girl, that would have definitely bumped it up a star. It would have you know? for sure paid off a little bit more. It would have felt like this, this, this relationship that I'm investing in, you know, there was some sort of thing to gain out of it, you know? But because this bitch never spoke, I, I felt really cheated. I mean, yeah. if I had it also allowed her to have no personality. So it, it, <laughs> if I had to assume, uh, it would make a guess, I would guess that by the second season, if it like wraps up completely, she'll say something. Cause I just, <laughs> she says, fuck. <laughs> she's like, what no, the she hell? just says the N word really. Yeah. <laughs> she just screams the N word. Like, um, was that Ono? Oh and the biggest issue was also just because, you know, I guess it's because this world's so absurd. The fact that she's such a good student, everybody looks up to her, all, yeah. all this stuff happens. But everybody's cool with the fact that she doesn't say anything. Ever. Yeah, Ever. Well, what you are know? you going to do about it, man? Fuck that bitch. One thing I did really like, though, also, was uh, whenever he would fight at the video game, at the arcade, he would, like, because there would be other people who were playing uh-huh. arcade games, and they'd get, like, too rowdy. And at yeah. first, he'd be kind of scared of them, but by the end of the season, he's like, oh, bitch, and they're like, he's wrestling some yeah. rando. It's funny, because... <laughs> They start out and there's like some people get too mad and it's, it's weird and it's scary, but then yeah, he's just like, oh no, this is a classic gamer thing. Two gamers got to duke it out. <laughs> Mostly, it's just they're trying to like wrestle each other without like punching because they're not or really fighting because they want to get kicked out yeah. or anything. But yeah, and they they just grab each other's shirts a while until one of them beats the other one. It's, it's like a, what? <laughs> it's just weird. It's just weird like grappling, fighting, not fighting thing. Yeah, um, but it looked really intense in the show. I was like, that's that's especially pretty- since it's gamers, so they're just like <laughs> idiots fucking- and don't know how to fight. Anyway. Oh yeah. Um, so whenever the, whenever those bits would come up, I was like, "That's that's kind of fun or whatever." Yeah. Also, the intro and outro song were actually pretty good in this show. I think I remember the liking the intro a lot. I can't remember the outro, but I think the intro visuals and song were fire. Mm-hmm. What was the outro like? The outro, I didn't like the visuals too oh, much of yeah, that. It was kind of the girl and kind of like a puppet. They're like bloopy. Yeah I, yeah, I agree. I don't like like the visuals. they had weird mushy faces that but I wasn't you, into. But I liked the the, song. the feeling of the end of it because it was the two girls from the show. I'm assuming because it was two girls singing, even though you don't hear Ono's voice other than like, <laughs> that was pretty much, she's like Kenny, but like way less fun from South yeah. Park and not as hot. Exactly. Right. Kenny's got a good set of blonde locks. Hell Anyways, yeah. um, it, it's them singing and it's like really kind of lackadaisical and mm-hmm. just chill ass, whatever. And I like that. But as the intro song, I liked all the music, did not care for the singing with it. Yeah. I, I really thought, um, the intro kind of like tricked me into thinking just yeah. the animation was going to be a lot you better. Get pumped. Yeah. yeah. And then like the show is starting like, what the fuck am I watching? And there's like a dumpster guy just eating Cheetos <laughs> and you're like, no, no, not for me. Thank you. Uh, 
Yeah, man. I think I think that's we've said all we can say about it. Honestly, um, I didn't hate the show. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. Nah. You know, I, but, I, but I like I I did. Well, I guess if somebody's really passionate about like video old games, school and video stuff, games, like yeah, you know what, man, this is a pretty cool show in terms of that. Like, it's really the, cool being the able to be like, bomb, yeah. oh yeah, I remember the first time that I learned how to Hadouken. That's pretty cool. But or like, like, yeah, Raiden special moves, doing that fucking finisher. Oh, it feels so good to do a fatality. I personally don't know anybody like that, so I don't personally know to be in my life. Nah. Would, but if I knew someone like that i agree i would that's be pretty like, much the only person that should watch it for sure um i again i i guess i i like the show i watched all of it i didn't hate my my entire time it when the second season comes out i will probably be watching it just because i want to see this bitch say something you know <laughs> and i'm like invested now yeah, man i mean i guess i'll watch it too we'll do an episode on that <laughs> that'd be Fuck awesome <laughs> really appreciate it i'm glad you're here to support your oh, boy dude, i got you but it's gonna be like months after it airs like <laughs> yeah. it was for this it took five months it's what gonna the be fuck? it's gonna be amazing there's some really horrible characters in here there's a the character with a fucking ugly fro and she's a chick with like pink hair and she wants to look at people's dicks she looks like king hippo if it yeah. were <laughs> if he were a tiny girl with pink hair <laughs> oh my god and there's a douchebag <laughs> with the black stars and there's that other there's fucking garbage people in the show um, Anyways, thank you so much for listening, you guys. Uh, I don't have anything else to say about High Score Girl on Netflix. Uh, watch it. Tell us what you think. Exactly. No, we appreciate no. it. Yeah. Uh, a homie earlier, I don't. I didn't get his name. He, he hit us up and he said uh, how he felt about Alita Battle Angel. Yeah. And it was cool. We, I mean, it was nice for him to say that he watched it and liked it. That's all he That's said. That's true. You know what, man? That's how I felt about Alita Battle Angel, too. So I agree. So, hey, if you watch high school girl if you liked it hated it or whatever just you know message us you're like yeah i did like and hate it <laughs> yeah anyways yeah. uh but yeah that's the show uh next week we're going to be talking with uh trip's former co-worker duncan my homie and uh current friend my homie uh about mob psycho i'm assuming mob psycho yeah, yeah. and uh, i'm doing a deep dive on some mob psycho manga right now well, have fun with that i'm not watching <laughs> i'm not reading that trash um i found some really good pictures honestly. i'm not doing this uh yeah so um if you like our logo hit up aaron from trippytops.com if you like our theme song check out tom nasser on soundcloud and youtube trip where can we find us you can find us on facebook look up the instant ramen podcast same thing goes for instagram look up the instant ramen podcast you could send us a tweet tweet at instant ramen pod podcast interfit and you could shoot us an email and start on podcast at gmail.com. That's where you tell us all of your most personal secrets. Like what is your favorite gummy and what kind of music do you like to listen to when you're sad? And have you been vaccinated for the measles? Also that. Yep. So this is bye from Juan. I'll see you around from Chris. Hey, trip. Don't forget. Just add hot water. <laughs>